What we're actually doing is making things more complex rather than easier. Here's why. Uh, I, I use a quote from Matt Lewin, who's just a futurist I've followed. And he talks about how our experience as humans, we don't, we so underestimate this in the hype of AI, which is what I love what you're doing. Because we have experience and we have a notion of ourself over time. How important is that per perspective that gives us imagination, causality, relationships, morals, ethics, goals, and intention, which is so key. And what you're doing with actually breaking them down into smaller models, I'm seeing others echo this, is that the whole idea of one model to be that brilliant is fine. Now, people know well, what uh, these large language models so far are capable of, but they haven't been able to do anything with automation. Automation is software. Software is deterministic. Right. And it basically incorporates the flow of information based on a workflow. But in order to inject AI into software, if you will, we're going to have to rethink building software from first principle with the view of this AI. And the model that we're presenting is we think it's quite natural and very elegant and can solve problems from healthcare all the way to manufacturing. The software that we built using this tool is the first AI native software is a project management tool with the name of our company, Amadeus. And we're actually putting this out in a public beta pretty soon. We have a kind of a private beta going with it. We've got a couple of enterprise clients as well on, on top of it. We weren't really planning to go into the enterprise market in the first phase. But so we were looking at smaller groups and that's where our focus is going to be. But we're using our own product to build our own product. So we're actually one of our own uh, the top users. You can think of it as a tool to create AI agents uh, without code that perform tasks and manage communication and documentation. So you can think of it that way in the language of AI agent today, but it uses that architecture of that I described that uh, we call object messaging and intelligent objects. So it, it uses that in the notion of a critical entity being self-contained and self-aware and having algorithms associated with it to limit its execution in terms of what all it can do. So it's not going to go haywire and, and, and hallucinate. It's a, it's a very deterministic process, but the tiny language model inside those objects just gives it the ability of understanding natural language, really. And being able to interact with users and understand if if it if an object comes to you and there's been a conversation for two weeks with four other people and you forget about it, you just ask the object saying, summarize yourself. And it's just summarize it and say, well, I like what Declan had to say about it. So instead of you going reading, you know, for three weeks of history, it, it right. can interact with you in an intelligent way. Or maybe you're an attorney and you get our system and you have four people working for you and uh, you want to assign things to people. So instead of sending him a message, you create this task agent and say, Declan, do X, Y, Z for this client and it, it's belonging to this project, you know? So, and that object comes and tells you, and then you sit there and go, well, I need Susie's help as well. Uh, can you get Susie's help? And that object shows up in Susie's inbox. It's not that you have to send a message to Susie's inbox. So basically this is really what changes everything. That's why in my introduction pitch, I said, instead of shuffling dumb messages back and forth, you're basically exchanging intelligent objects. And these objects just know where to go because if if you tell it, uh, tell ask Declan if we need something, it's like an intelligent agent. It's not a message. It'll show up and say, do we need? and it knows what to share with you. So this is really by design. And you basically, we're giving behavior, very predefined, disciplined behavior to these critical entities, these objects. And then we let them loose. But we will let them loose. They're not going to go all over the place. They're well programmed. They cannot execute more than these four or 18 functions, but they okay. also can read and understand language and you can ask them questions. And so it completely changes the whole, the whole game. And imagine a lot of little bots that are intelligent, but they're confined. They're custom programmed, but they're intelligent. So they're, but they're not going to run wild, you see.